All right. <clears throat> um, actually, I'm still in Peace House. Huh? Just like the background is different. Right now, I'm in the, my first floor. Not the usual downstairs. <clears throat> anyway. So tonight, we have a Q&A session. Uh, I got a number of questions to, for tonight. <clears throat> okay, let's go drill into it. I can never... Never mind, Hun Leng, Hun Leng. I will uh, do the screen sharing. Can you stop by this one? Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, okay. Okay. Can you see? Okay. Question number one. When I attend meditation retreats, I can get mentally and physically exhausted by third or fourth day. Can you share on how we could balance our energy levels during meditation during a meditation retreat? Mm -hmm. Now I go to one B also. Mm -hmm. uh, can when I label my bodily actions during the day, example, walking, pulling, pushing, raising, bringing, bending, stretching, after some time, my mindfulness on physical actions becomes strong. I can clearly remember what I did. But mindfulness of the mind is much weaker. I still can't watch my thoughts well. Is it because I'm over-concentrating on the body such that I neglect the mind? Trihua from Singapore. <clears throat> okay, this question one and two, they have a, they, although they have different questions, but they're same answer. Oh, same answer. Uh, we are explaining it in a short while. Huh? Same answer in a sense that now, uh, for both of these, this is not enough practice. <laughs> not enough practice. That is your simple answer. That means that you need more practice in order to overcome all this problem. Yeah? But anyway, we're going to explain a little bit more. Question on the 1A. Uh, you get mentally exhausted by third or fourth day. Yeah. It's not that whether you should balance your energy level during this time. Yeah? You don't worry about those balancing yet right now. What is important is is it uh, what is important is that when you go for a retreat, uh, um, because I do not really know you, uh, when you go for a retreat, don't go for four day five days type of retreat. Uh, four day five days type of retreat. It's you're gonna have a uh, mentally and physically very exhausted actually. Uh, Minimum, you should go for 10 days. Uh, better, of course, there are longer days. More days will be better. Yeah. Now, the first three or four days, uh, for many, for many uh, yogis, for many yogis, the first three or four days is mentally and physically exhausted. Exhausting, actually. <clears throat> Some people, they are so exhausted until the seventh day. Then only they can start doing some meditation. The first few days while we are in the retreat is always a transitioning period. A, transi a transitioning period means you are doing very fast, you are doing a lot of things, you are trying to get your deadline before you come into a retreat, you have a responsibility, you are doing 
Yeah, you carry on with your life. You, you your life was very fast, fast paced, and then here you are doing in a retreat. Everything slows down, and there's nothing much for you to do. There's not much responsibility. There's uh, just sit and walk and eat and sleep. And next day you continue again. So you don't have much of other entertainments and so on. So during this time, the mind may feel exhaust, exhausted, mentally exhausted and physically exhausted. Because sometimes the bodily stress also builds up while we are in the everyday life. We don't realize it how much we build up until when we slow down or when we stop everything, like when we come into a retreat, then only we feel all this tension, all this pressure that is building, that was there. Then only when in a retreat, then only we realize that we are really exhausting, you know, mentally and physically exhausting. So, so what you should do during the first few days of a retreat for any one of you are going for a retreat, first few days, um, <clears throat> actually you should, um, don't worry about too much of uh, sitting meditation actually. it be a lot of sleepiness, a lot of drowsiness, your mind is not clear. So this time will be better to do more on the walking meditation and the daily activities and to be mindful and really clear about your daily activities. These two aspects it arouses the mindfulness faster, clearer. So when only when the, the mindfulness able to arouse from these two, then only the sitting meditation becomes more clearer. Then that time the restlessness, the sloth and topper reduce. Not to say zero, but reduce. That you at least there are some sittings you are much more clearer. Uh, there are some sittings you are still struggling with some sleepiness, drowsiness, yeah? but there are sittings be more clearer. First few days, every sitting is almost not very clear. So that's why you should not, the strategy here is that you should not pay attention too much on the sitting meditation. Yeah? Uh, it's better to do it on the, a few days later. That'll be much better yeah? for most of you. Well, some people is different. Some people, they come in from another retreat. They come in from another retreat and they just continue in the next retreat. So that that is, they, they just can continue walking, sitting, walking, sitting as usual. But for most of you, you are just coming in from, uh, let's say from work, from, from your, and you stop for, let's say 10 days or two weeks, huh? then the first few days, you'll be very exo exhausting. Yeah? All of us too. Even right now, if I go into a, uh, a retreat also, first two or three days, one or two days maybe, uh, I also feel drowsiness and so on because the body is not adjusted to it. So after a few days, uh, after a few days when the body settled down, the mind settled down to the schedule, to the time, to the sleeping time, to the uh, once the body is in tune to the to the retreat settings, then the mind becomes much more clearer. At that time, you can able to meditate better. Huh? So, don't worry about balancing the thing. Yet. Is first few days is about arousing, arousing. So, question two. You can't catch your um, thoughts well. Hmm? You can't catch your thoughts well, but you can you can able to notice your bodily actions much more better. Am I concentrate over concentrating on the body? Yeah? Am I over concentrating on the body? Now here, when you able to catch your thoughts well, but uh, sorry, when you're able to catch your body well. That means that this time your mindfulness is a bit more continuous, which is good. This is wonderful. Yeah. Um, catching the mind, when you catch your thoughts and so on, it needs a more consistent mindfulness before you can able to catch the mind. Which you are doing right. All you need to do is a little bit more practice. You just keep on pushing. Then... Then later part, you can able to catch the mind too. Not all the time, but at least some of the time you can able to do that. 
Uh, all the thoughts or some of the thoughts that is coming in, sometimes immediately you can able to catch it. Or uh, sometimes the the thoughts come in in the, somewhere in the middle that you are already drifted to all your stories and then suddenly you remember, then you cut it off, then you can be able to catch it. Uh, so not your, your your question here is that not yet you are doing wrong. Uh, you're just doing not enough. It needs to a bit more push, a bit more continuous in the mindfulness than that time. Uh, the mind becomes more clearer to you in the sense that the clarity of the mind or the restlessness mind or the sleepy mind also become more clearer to you. At that time, when it's, they are more clearer to you, you can use them as a meditation object. And you can able to note them too. Yeah? Uh, so, so your question here is a matter of uh, not enough practice. All right? So, go to next question <clears throat> okay can you all see cannot see anything huh? can see not yet. not yet uh, question number two huh? not yet all right. cannot see yet not yet, ah, not yet. oh okay uh, let me see uh. try again huh? Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Good. Question two. Usually, after listening to good dharma talks, my mind just quickly want to share with my close dharma friends. Is this wholesome or unwholesome mental state, or just bad habit? Sometimes I classify myself as KPC, busybody. <laughs> Please clarify my doubt and thank you, Bante. Yeah. For, for those who are from overseas, you do not know what is KPC, doesn't matter. It means just busybody. <laughs> it's more of a Hokkien thing or Chinese thing. Huh? Anyway. Now, <clears throat> um, to put it simple here, to put it simple here, it is wholesome that you want to share something that you find that is beneficial to you, especially a Dhamma talk. You want to share it with friends or you want to share it with close friends or you want to share it with uh, your own family or your Dhamma family. Yeah? So this is wholesome. This is wholesome. You're, 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 you're sharing something wholesome. Yeah, yeah uh, busybody, that one, don't worry about it. Yeah? But it's the next part that I need to clarify a little bit more. And the next part is the sharing is wonderful, but how you share that is something needs to be a bit more uh, clarified. Yeah? Yeah. You know, sometimes uh, well, once in a while, uh, you know, once in a while, at least I get get this this type of thing also. Uh. Um, some devotees they listen to a certain dharma talks and then they come to me. Bande, Bande, this Dhamma talk, uh, wonderful Bande, holy hell, it's wonderful. Uh. Then I say, what is good? Bande, you just listen, uh, Bande, you just listen, very good, uh, Bande. Sure, guarantee you listen, very good. Uh. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So I can play the Dhamma talk, listen to it. And then after that, the, inside the Dhamma talk, the monk, uh, let, uh, the monk talk about when, when meditation, then you can see the lights, you can see the Buddha, then he can feel other people, metta, can feel this and that. <laughs> they are very, in, I mean, these devotees, they are very in tune with all these type of powers, these type of things and so on, you know. When I listen to all these type of things, then I know that, well, when these things has a lot to do with the upakilesa, a lot to do with the craving and attachment and imagination and so on. And yet, sometimes people tell me that this is wonderful because the mind got this power, that power, that thing and so on. You know? Now, sometimes, sometimes, um, is that when we, 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 we get something good, you know, 
something wholesome or some thoughts are wholesome, we want to shove it down the, some other people's throat you know, and force feed them into, into their mouth or into their minds. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes, we, sometimes we kind of like do that. You know? We understood. We understand that. We understand these type of things are happening. Now, <clears throat> what is what is important here is that that uh, you know, um, let's just go back to the talk on Wednesday. We talk about the four idipadas. Huh? Uh, the the four idipadas here, where you have the uh, chanda as an itipada, uh, as a, the uh, chanda here means a desire to do or a wish to do. And then uh, after that, you have the effort as a second one. Then the third one, you have the um, chitta or the mind. And the fourth one, you have the, <clears throat> the fourth one, you have the vimangsa or the investigating. Uh, the investigating. Now here, when, when you are practicing in your meditation, as I said yesterday, that although you have all these four, but one of it will become more predominant to you throughout your practice. Uh, one of it become more predominant throughout your practice compared to the other three. So well and good. Uh. So let's say you, you, you also achieve the result of enlightenment, let's say which is great, wonderful. Now, when you come out to teach, let's say, let's say you come out to teach to other people, you will teach according to your, how you practice, the way that you practice. Your talks, your talks or your sharing will be based on the, that nature also. Now, if you are very much into the chanda, thing or faith thing, then your Dharma talks will be based on that thing. Uh, beautiful uh, action, wonderful action that you can see people offerings, dana, sila, those type of things uh, that the, the speaker or the Dharma person who shares the Dharma will be more concentrate into that area. Uh, whereas if you are very much into uh, striving in the sense that you're making a lot of effort, then your talks also, we are sharing also, we're very much on to, you make effort, make effort, make effort, make effort, make effort. Yeah. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Huh? No matter, die also struggle. Next life, come back also struggle. Everything is about effort. <laughs> yeah. Then if you have a lot of this chitta also, huh? then a lot of, sometimes you have a lot of, um, understanding of the um, uh, suttas, you, you learn about Abhidhamma and all these things because it, it gives you that urgency, it gives you that strength in the, your practice, then also in that way you will share with others also. Now, if you are in a vimangsa type, you know, you're more, you more over towards to see what is right and how to do it and this is the way to do it, this is not the way to do it, how to balance, how how to use this way to balance, how to use that way to balance, uh, when you should exercise more of this, when you should exercise more of that, uh, then you're able to discern the different ways of things, then so on, and, and so on. And therefore, when he gave the talk, or when she gave the talk, and she shared with people, also he shared according to her predominance, or her, his predominance. In, in this way. Huh? So the same thing also, when we, a person comes to share the, the Dhamma with us, they're also sharing their nature. Yeah? They're also sharing their nature with us. And sometimes if the two nature able to ngam, uh, able, you can able to sing together, that if you are faith oriented and then you share with somebody who is faith oriented also, in a sense, then both of you can able to appreciate the Dhamma talk or appreciate the sharing. Uh, but if you are not into all this type of um, uh, analyzing and thinking about it, then you share with this, although that 
you may think that, oh, this is wonderful. This, this uh, Apidama talk is wonderful. We can able to cut this, cut that here and there. But when you share with somebody else, somebody, what, they are, what is she talking about? What is she talking about? <laughs> so, so there are, there are difference. Yeah, there are difference on on when we come to Idipada and how we share our our this thing, our our sharing with others. So the question is that whether you are whether you are uh, I mean um, I mean it's it's perfectly all right to share with this. It's just that you just have to be careful that you know, the, whether the person who receive it able to appreciate or understand what what is being shared and because sometimes they are have a different tendency then when you share it they, they find it that there's not much of a benefit in them yeah. hmm? so something like this huh? so it's always wholesome to share the dhamma talk yeah? all right Okay, we go to question number three. Okay, can you all see question three? Cannot. Okay. Not. <laughs> There's something wrong with this. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me try again. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do a second time. Okay. Why is Sotapanna level and beyond having the permanent eradication of wrong view, but not anything below that? Five aggregates are not permanent. So says when one is reborn, why does Sotapanna level and beyond stay? This is from Lewin in Houston, US. <clears throat> now, so why Sotapanna level and beyond that means beyond here means the higher level of enlightenment you know, second stage third stage fourth stage arahanship uh, having permanently eradicate wrong view but not anything below that uh, um five aggregates are not permanent when you say one is reborn does why does Sota le Sotapanna level stay? <clears throat> okay. When, when one attains enlightenment, yeah, when one for the first time attaining enlightenment, yeah, then that it arises these two consciousness, two different consciousness which call the path and the friction consciousness, maga and pala consciousness. Now, these two consciousness, they take nibbana as an object. And they take nibbana as an object. But else, whereas the maga consciousness, it got an extra function. The maga consciousness here, it eradicates the latent defilements of the mind, yeah? whereas the friction consciousness does not eradicate anything. And this maga consciousness again, they only arises once in your whole existence of samsara. If it's the sotapanna maga, that means it only arises once and then it, it already disappears. Uh, it cannot arise again. Whereas the friction consciousness of uh, Sotapana and also Sakadami and all that, that friction consciousness can arise again and again and again and again and again and again. As long as you will it, as long as you wish it, it can able to arise. Even for Arahant, they can able to arise this consciousness. But for path consciousness, uh, since there are four levels, that means there is only four consciousness only. And after that, it already disappeared. But when it happens, when it happens, that path consciousness happens, it, it will do its job of eradicating that latent defilements. Now, latent defilements here, 
it's a defilement that right now it's not there for you and me right now. In the sense that, uh, let's say if the anger right now, you are not experiencing anger right now, that means it's not in the mind. But when we say they are still latent in us, because in the future, when a condition trigger off something for us to get be angry, then that anger arises. That means it comes from the latent level. Then after that, it builds up into the mental level, builds up into a physical level. That means um, you may hurt people or you uh, verbal level, you may uh, harsh speech and so on. Mm -hmm. Mentally angry. So it, er, those arises, we call it arises from the latent tendency, from the latent defilement. Uh, so when... When um, a person uh, realizes this path consciousness, then that path consciousness will immediately do its job to eradicate the defilements. And all other consciousness cannot able to do this eradication. Other consciousness, perhaps below below sotapanna, that means you are uh, still a whirling, you, know? you can able to sort of like suppress them with, uh, with your wisdom, with your concentration, with your dana, with your sila, and so on. So many things you can do, you can able to, um, uh, you can able to suppress them. And they may not able to come up for a long, long period of time. Yeah? Even for those who are like in the Brahma realm, uh, those in the Brahma realm, then they can go without anger and they can go without craving or sensual, sensual desire for eons and eons. Yeah for a very, very long time, very, very long time, as if like, as if like the anger was already gone, as if like the central pleasure is already gone. But even for the Brahma, the latent level, it's still there. It's still there. It's only when they come up, let's say, into reborn again in the very future, then they, they, um, um, they, reborn again in the sensual world, like human beings or, or um, Deva realm, yeah? not Brahma realm, but Deva realm, then the sensual pleasures and the anger will spring up again. Even for a long, long period of time, it doesn't come up. So it can remain latent for a long, long period of time. So don't underestimate these latent defilements. So no matter what they do, no matter how they practice, as long as they do not able to enlighten, then there's no eradication. No other consciousness can able to do the eradication. It's only this path consciousness can do that. Yeah. So the path consciousness, they themselves too are not permanent in the sense that they arises and they passes away then the job done yeah? so when the job done here when you put the word permanent it's not a very right word because here is an extinction of that particular defilement for example if you mention here is wrong view then it's an extinction of wrong view that means it's already removed everything. There's nothing there. You can't say that that one is permanent. Yeah? You can't say those things are permanent anymore because of eradication already take place. There's nothing there anymore. Yeah? Uh, so here, here when five aggregates and so on, all these are impermanent in the sense that they are there they arises, they passes away, they arises again, they pass away again and again and again and again. As long as you're in samsara, then this aggregates arises and passes away. So when it comes into the eradication, 
then that particular defilement is being eradicated. They are extinct. Yeah. Extinct, then you don't have to do a job anymore. Whereas when you are not extinct, when the sorry, when you when the certain defilements are not extinct, then you have to still work for it. That means even the sotapanna able to eradicate the wrong view, but the sensual desire and the anger is still there. Uh, then he got to keep on that practicing, keep on noting again and again until reaching up to uh, anagami. Uh, then with the path consciousness arises, then the latent defilement of uh, sensual pleasures and also uh, and also the um, anger uh, is all completely removed and so on with the higher um, uh, factors or higher latent defilements. Uh, so it's all about that path consciousness through the eradication and therefore extinction comes, well, extinction of that particular defilement comes in. So they are not to say that they are permanent. So th therefore, when you go into a rebirth in the future, uh, although the five aggregates is still there, uh, uh, although the five aggregate is still there, then the wait, well, and the five aggregate is still there, but the but the defilements already eradicated, that particular reformance already eradicated. So let's say you are death, you died as a sotapanna. Huh? You died as a sotapanna. So you already done your job, they already eradicate. So you when you reborn, then the the you are still a sotapanna. And 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 then if you practice more, then of course you go up higher. Huh? Now on the other hand, for um, just, just a little bit more, for a jhana practitioner, for a jhana practitioner, uh, for a jhana practitioner, you cannot able to sustain that first, let's say the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, in the, if the next life. Even in this life also the same thing. Mm. Even when you practice the first jhana, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, lah, huh? eight jhana here, all if you can able to attain what the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and six, and seven, and eight, huh? then if you don't pr practice for let's say for one year, you don't practice. When you you <clears throat> when you don't practice for one year, let's say, huh? then you have to start all the way from number one again. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. <clears throat> Even the jhana, it cannot sustain because the jhana still falls under five aggregates. If they arises, they pass away. When the condition is not there, when you don't practice, in other words, then those jhana cannot be maintained. Then that jhana will fade away so-called uh, fade away that you cannot <clears throat> after a year you sit down you cannot able to go in into jhana uh, immediately but because of you have done practice before uh, you have done practice then you you if you keep on trying again after a few days or maybe a week later and so on because you know the way how to practice then this jhana also come back easily to you then after that, you can be able to go in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. So on the jhana level, on the samatha level, they are different because if you don't practice, this jhana disappear. But for sotapanna enlightenment, no matter how negligent a uh, sotapanna is, let's say the sotapanna doesn't practice for one year, let's say, uh, let's say it doesn't practice for one year, then that extinction also is already there. Hmm. It's just that he may not able, he, when he start practicing again, uh, let's say a year again for the sotapanna, then he will start again, uh, like the first question, sleepy, drowsy, and so on. And then after that, the past few days, the momentum gain again, uh, and then he can go in, into all the 
Ibana and further practice some more. Yeah. So don't so for for enlightenment, they are, they are very different from the worldly states uh, because of the extinction that's taking place. Worldly states has no extinction yet. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Question number three. Wait, huh? Can you see again? All right, we go question number four. Question number four. Let me see. Huh? All right. The five faculties, Indriya, and the five powers, how are they different? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, since uh, some of you may not may uh, didn't follow the on a Wednesday talk. Uh, uh, just let go go back to my slides. Okay, let me go back to my slides. Okay, can you see the seven bojanga again? Cannot. Uh. Stop share. Stop share. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on again. Can you see the seven bojanga? Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Now, in the five balas and the five powers here, yeah, here, as I said, the five bala and the five the five powers and the five controlling faculties, they have the exactly the same component, five of them. Faith here is sadha, effort is viriya, mindfulness is sati, concentration is samadhi, and wisdom is panya. Yeah. Indriya also the same thing. F faith, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. They are exactly the same thing. Yeah? They're exactly the same thing. Now, wait now. Let me go back to my this one. Can you see the question again now? Okay. All right. The five faculties and the five, yeah, how are they different? The components there are the same, but how are they different? Yeah. They are different in the sense that one is the, I would say, you know, how the controlling faculties here, the five faculties are the five controlling faculties. That means it what it do, it 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 has it do certain action, it do it um, governs or it do a certain action for the mind. Whereas the powers here, it prevents something from coming in or it prevents the defilements from coming in. It prevents the defilements from coming in. Now, it is easier to give us, to give you example. Take, take mindfulness. Let's take mindfulness, sati. What is the difference between sati in the indriya and sati in the bala? Yeah. When you say sati as an indriya, yeah, then here the sati as an indriya, it on on Wednesday, oh yeah, on Wednesday as I said, as I said that one of the characteristic of and not on Wednesday, I was talking about on the. Um, Daily mindfulness. Then uh, I say one of the character, one of the problems that you cannot able to develop daily mindfulness is because you don't even know the characteristic of a mindfulness. Then you can develop all kinds of wrong things. Then you have a hard time of developing mindfulness. So one of the character characteristic of mindfulness, as I said, is a heightened awareness. The mind is heightened up. Uh, it's not just an everyday awareness, but it's a much more that you put a bit more attention into something. Uh, as I said, you when you want to handle something dangerous, uh, you are handling hot water, for example. Uh, as a Buddha that gave you a person holding uh, a, a bowl of oil right to the brim, and he must not spill the oil. Yeah, in that sense, yeah. Uh, that you must put much more attention into it. Now, when you do that, that is the nature of mindfulness. That means here, 
its nature is to bring the mind closer to an object. It brings the mind closer to an object. That's why you pay attention a bit more. Not just like every day you sit down there, you notice this and that, you know. That is not really mindfulness. Some people say that they sit down in the garden, watch the birds fly here and there. Oh, I'm in present right now. I'm mindful. This is not mindfulness because there's, the mind is not heightened up. The mind is not clear. So, so the nature of mindfulness here is that it's bring the whole state of mind close to the object. Its job, its function is to close to the object. It doesn't scrutinize that particular object. It doesn't concentrate the object. Those concentration belongs to the belongs to concentration. Scrutinizing belongs to the wisdom. Their function. Mindfulness its job is just to bring close to the object. But because that when we are meditating, you know, when we are meditating, all the five happen simultaneously, you know. But when we are giving a talk, we have to exclude something out first in order for the, for us to see its characteristics. Yeah. So the mindfulness here is to stay with the object close to it. You know? It stays close to it. Yeah. So it's it's area. It's 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 function or its province or its its it governs the area of clarity clarity area of uh, confronting the object to bring the object near so that is it's as an indriya yeah? Yeah. whereas as a power whereas as a power sati as a power then the sati here it's cannot be overcome by what we call heedlessness or forgetfulness. Pamada, the Pali word. You cannot be overcome by it. In a sense that, for example, just like the question number one, you try to meditate, you try to meditate, and then when the story comes up, and then you fall into the story. When you fall into the story, that means the mindfulness already stopped. Why the mindfulness stopped? Because the mindfulness is not strong. It, the defilements, the mental hindrances here, the restless mind here, it already overcomes the mindfulness. That's why we fall into the, we fall into the the thoughts and thinking and planning, imagination, and so on. Yeah. But when that mindfulness is strong as a power, then that time uh, you are paying attention to an object. Let's say from, from somewhere behind and then the thought starts to creep in. Then you already know, hey, it's coming in already. You, by the time you're just aware of that thought, the thought already disappears. That means that the thought right now cannot overcome the mindfulness. Yeah, It cannot overcome the mindfulness. So that time the mindfulness acts as a power. All right? It acts as a power. So, so too, so too, uh, so too. When we have other, uh, other uh, like uh, uh, virya, uh, let, 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 let's look into virya. We we'll look into an example. Uh, then this this nature of this virya is to provide energy. Its job is to provide vibrancy to all other associated mental factors. No. That means it gives, the, it gives the mindfulness to do its function. If there's no energy, the mindfulness pun tak boleh jalan. You know? The mindfulness needs energy. It, it needs for it to able to do its... The mindfulness for it to do the function. Virya, the effort has to provide it. Uh, for mindful, uh, for that for that wisdom to do its scrutinizing on that object, then the virya also is providing the energy so that the wisdom can able to scrutinize the object. 
so its its function is to do that uh, its function is to do that right so that when it do that it, it acts as an indriya okay it acts as an indriya it, it governs that area of providing energy it governs that part is mindfulness does not provide energy mindfulness is just to bring the mind close to it uh, that is the indriya uh, for sati as an indriya uh, uh, whereas back again to the effort again uh, now effort again here if it's act as a power then this time when it acts as a power then the principle here is it cannot be overcome by other its opposite defilement here now the opposite of it of this virya here is the laziness of the mind or the sloth and topper of the mind uh, the sloth and topper cannot overcome it because the virya is powerful the opposite and when, when you have the correct then the nature of this sloth and topper here sloth and topper is depleting energy uh, depleting the mental energy uh, it's they are totally different so when the virya is sustainable the virya is continuous balanced then this time the the um, all your sleepiness doesn't come in uh, even the even the uh, one you meditate you want not many then you already know already you just push up a little bit more of the mind of the energy then all the sloth and topper doesn't come in uh, for many of you you cannot able to achieve that yet you, the moment it comes in it sneak around quietly make you then the more that you meditate how come uh, how come i meditate already then it initially was very clear and then after that become blur not so clear everything become dull everything become stop then also i break <laughs> i sleep during sitting <laughs> why is that so because virya is not powerful the virya is not sustainable yeah? so this is because you're already ov overcome by its opposite by sloth and topper so so faculties and virya although they are the same they have the same component but they act differently uh, they act differently yeah? so too we you have uh, um, uh, like confidence confidence the nature of confidence is that it it clear it makes everything very clear in front of you uh, that is there's no like something covering you up it's very clear uh, you are confident about the object yeah then the opposite of this uh, uh, sada it's the vichikicha yeah? the skeptical doubt yeah? the skeptical doubt then the doubt they say you meditate halfway then you think uh, rising falling can or not is it right rising falling suitable meditation or not yeah. uh, all kinds of thoughts uh, all kinds of skeptical doubt it starts, starts creeping in then all your meditation object also not clear uh, so when the confidence is there on the object then all this type of skeptical doubt don't come in uh, so something like this huh? and 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 just to go a little bit more on the concentration concentration here is the nature of concentration its function is to hold them together hold all the other associate states together so that they they are on the object now, the opposite side of it is that the opposite side is that the mind get distracted distracted in a sense that um, when the if the concentration is not strong easily that distracted that means you meditate huh? you meditate meditate after that you watch your in breath out breath clearly then after that short while there's a sound there you hear the sound oh what is it huh? what type of sound is that huh? and then you go into you're distracted or you're distracted into a bit of thoughts and then you get distracted a little bit of a little bit of people walking past you also get distracted huh? that means the concentration is weak yeah so when you have uh, 
power, as a concentration, as a power, then it doesn't get distracted. Everything is unified onto the whole mind is unified onto the object. Yeah? All the other faculties, they also they are unified to the object. For wisdom factor here, as a faculty again, then its job is to scrutinize. That means that it sees this thing as arising, passing away, long, short, fast, slow. What is going on with those objects? No, you 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 feel that the hardness is getting more, it's getting less, it's getting this way or that way. Sometimes you you notice your pain, this pain after that it changed to that pain, pain and then it getting more painful. Uh, this is because your wisdom is scrutinizing the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Yeah. Then if your wisdom is not exercising your wisdom here, then you just sit down there. You, you can be mindful. You can be mindful. You can be alert. But your mind is not penetrating. Your mind is not seeing things as they are. When the pain comes in, uh, you just sit there. Pain only. Pain. pain. Uh, then the teacher asks you, how do you know the pain? Pain, pain. Uh. What is there to know? <laughs> Nothing else. Uh. Just pain on here. Sit there. That means you are not, the, the faculty is not, you are not scrutinizing thing. That means other words, uh, other words, ignorance is coming in. Uh, delusion, delusion is coming in. It just it, it, it the, the opposite of this wisdom is that the delusion and the delusion it comes in as just you sit there, although you are mindful, but you are not doing the job of scrutinizing. Just sit there. So that's why during in the retreat, we want you to pay attention and what is going on. You have to describe, you have to see, and we have not just walk up, walk down, just not just sit there, feel the the uh, feel the breeze passing through, see the birds, see the see other people. Uh, although you are present, but you are not exercising the wisdom. Yeah. So this is what we mean here. And yeah? so they are different. So this is what they are different in the sense of one as a as a governing body, as a, a something to do something and a function to do to do an action, to do a mental action. And Bala here is to prevent unwholesome thing, unwholesome uh, prevent the opposite from coming in. Usually is the defilements. Yeah? <clears throat> now this is how we look at it but there are some teachers there are some teachers that I also have heard uh, they say that Indriya is lower uh, Bala is higher uh, Indriya is lower Bala is higher that means Indriya is not as strong as uh, Bala thing uh, I, I find that this explanation is not very good Anyway, it doesn't matter because as you, as you get stronger and stronger, as you're mentally you get stronger and stronger, this both of this function and as a prevention, the faculties and powers, they go hand in hand. Uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, so you, you, you all, what you want to do is that to make sure that all these five faculties are in a state of balance. If in the state of balance, then your mind is doing con continuous mindfulness, continuous clarity, con continuous penetration, continuous uh, energy, continuous clarity of the mind, you know, which is wonderful, you know, which is wonderful. And you sustain it as long as you can. So when the mind doesn't get into, you know, because of mind, mind is impermanent, all these states of mind is impermanent, then it, they may change. And then may change, then we apply certain ways of over, uh, to get the mind back into balance. Yeah? <clears throat> but that one is a lot of talks. Huh? That one, that one you come into a, a retreat, huh? and then I'm happy to give you this type of talks. But here, all of you are not in the retreat. Here, I talk after that. If I talk further, then then uh, you may not be able to understand so much of it unless you meditate. Yeah? <clears throat> is somebody's, somebody's, this one is on, uh, Hun Ling. Uh, 
Good link. Somebody's mic is on. Wait, uh, wait, uh, wait. Uh, I go back to my Zoom. Ah, uh, jet in. <laughs> you mute your mic. Hmm. Okay. What else do we have? All right. I have a question in the in the chat area. Uh, can you all see the chat? Okay. For those who are not able to see the chat, um. Uh, for those who are in the in the Facebook, you may not be able to see the chat right now. Uh, but anyway, I'll read it for you. Huh? Bhante, in sitting meditation, I often have this problem of the body tilted. Once I notice it, I move the body upright. Not long after that, the body tilted. At it. I don't feel sleepiness. Is it because lack of mindfulness? Okay, it's so like... Hold on, huh? hold on. For those who are in the... For those who are in the this one, let me uh, whiteboard. Can you see the whiteboard now? Okay. Uh, text. Welcome. Wait now. Uh, let me go back to the. Let me go back to the this one. But anyway, doesn't matter. I can't. I want to to cut and paste out from the text into the whiteboard. Anyway, all right. Anyway, uh, let me see. Where's my chat again? Okay. One day in sitting meditation, I often have this problem of the body tilted. I once I notice it. I move my body upright. Not long after that, my body tilt again. I do not feel sleepiness. Is it lack of mindfulness? That all depends. Yeah? Here, when your body is tilting, when you are meditating, especially when you are doing vipassana, not, not samatha part. Yeah? If you are doing vipassana part, yeah? if your body is tilted a little bit, yeah? um, my instruction here is that you don't have to you don't have to bring the body into a straight position. Keep the body a bit tilted and meditate from there. Whether it's rising, falling or whatever that you are doing, and especially when your mind is still clear, then keep it there. Yeah? You keep it there. Because sometimes you have to see things as they are, not what you want to. Yeah? In certain times, when it comes into a meditation, the body has got its own behavior. Slightly changes here and there. And then when it tilted a little bit, we wanted to get it straight. We wanted to get it straight. Because why? We want to get it straight because we have been taught again and again that when you meditate, you must sit straight. straight. Everybody must sit straight. Which is true in the beginning part of the when you are actually begin to meditate. But when you are in the retreat or when you are developed further, you know, the body tends to have, it shows its characteristics to you. Then that time, what you should do is that you, know, you pay attention to how the body tilted and keep the body there. If it's tilted a little bit front or to the side, doesn't matter. If it does not disturb you, then stay there and watch your rising and falling. Yeah. Don't do what you want. Don't do what you think is right. You do what the body it feels a little bit. But if it's tilted too much, uh, and, it, and this could be because sleepiness may already crept in, uh, then that time you make an effort to bring it up in order to overcome some sleepiness or drowsiness. But if you are not drowsy and the mind is clear, you don't go and disturb the whole sitting. Keep it there. If it's tilted also, it's okay. Okay, all right. Next question. Oh, come up another one. Yeah? All right, we're already 10 o'clock. This is the last one. Huh? One day. Roughly how much time should we spend on spurt of mindfulness during our daily practice? Thank you. Huh. 
whatever. This one uh, here, um, Huneng, you can copy and uh, paste again uh, to the to the um, Facebook audience. Roughly, how much time should we spend on spurt of mindfulness during our daily practice? Now, here during daily practice, uh, it all depends on how much time you want to give. Uh, each and what everybody can be very different. Yeah, because sometimes uh, this bird of mindfulness, you all got to be careful. If you force yourself trying to be mindful, trying to be follow everything that you want to do, for even for a sh for a period of time, uh, some people get into tension, you know, head tension, back tension, and so on. Yeah. And and they do not want to re and they do not not want to relax. And they they just force the mind into it, you know? and they can get tension. Mm. And 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 because of this this daily practice, as I said, now you just spend 10, 10 seconds or fifteen seconds or thirty seconds, a spurt of mindfulness that you go into it and be aware of what you are doing at that moment of time. Then after that, you come out. Those normal again, like what you are doing every day, you know, a bit faster and so on. Then after that, in another thing, you go in again. And you go in again, you dive in again, you be watchful of what's going on. Then after that, you come up again. You come up again and other things, you do something like this throughout the day. And it's very helpful. It creates a good habit of the mind. You know? But this one is not a substitute for a sitting meditation or a walking meditation. Eh? This is like a supportive for us. It is good to support. You have a good supportive condition. Eh? Don't neglect it, but here, as I said, don't overdo it also because this can create a lot of tension in some people. Eh? When you're in a retreat, it's better for you to do longer period of time because you've got nothing else. You got you don't have to worry about uh, time so much. Whereas at home or at work, you may need to to uh, worry about those things. Yeah? And then when you do worry about those things, you try this and you try that. Sometimes the whole mind jam up, and you get a lot of tension. Yeah. So try that and see. All right. Okay, that's about it for tonight. All right. So this is the Q and A. So the next talk will be on Monday. Yeah? The next talk will be on Monday. Then we'll see what, what other days we, we can, uh, we, we will talk. All right. So we'll see on Monday. All right. Okay. So now we share merits. Huh?